I call this city council meeting to order. So there's no one for the open forum, so we will proceed to the Pledge of Allegiance. Would you please stand and join us up here as we say the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. This time I ask the approval of the minutes of the special concurrent city council and planning commission work session of July 22nd, 2014. The regular city council meeting of July 22nd, 2014. So moved. Second. All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Um, for council discussion, we have a couple of items first uh, on our docket to, to discuss before we get off to hats to um, hat, um, Hats off to hometown hits. Um, the city council attendance at the National League of Cities of Congress is gonna be in Austin, Texas on November 18th through the 22nd, 2014. Um, is, are there other council members who are interested in attending? I think the mayor should go. <laughs> I was planning, mm -hmm. others? If you, especially you still have time, but um, if that's okay, then we'll move for, forward with that. Um, the other thing I wanted to do is, uh, some of us I think got this new card, it's the Better Roads, Better Ridgefield, this is our Sweet Streets campaign, and I love my t-shirt, I wear it around town, and there's a really nice update, and I love all the updates on the card, and I think Mike's going to give us a fuller view of what's going on, our uh, Director of Public Works. Uh, I just wanted to let you know, you, last week you got a memo from staff about the upcoming uh, public hearing on this, and you got a copy of that postcard. The city attorneys and our bond council now has reviewed that. And there's a couple minor changes in, uh, on that card. I just wanted to make sure that you got the updated one. We're ready to go to the printers tomorrow to mail this out. And I wanted to just take this time to just remind the council and maybe the, the folks at home about what's coming up as with the uh, Sweet Street. Um, well, first of all, I'd like to just point out that on September 23rd at 7 o'clock, there will be an open house that w on the bond sale for several of the projects. And, and the, this whole process is kind of a culmination of several separate projects that are going on. We talked about the mill and overlay project. Remember where we talked yep. about we're going to take off the top two inches, really $20 million worth of work throughout the city. That's the first project that's identified in blue there. And that one we're going to do as part of the bond sale. We're going to sell bonds in order to get the money up front to do the work. And that's being paid for from the uh, franchise fees. So that does not have anything to do with property taxes. But in order to pull the bonding costs down, we're going to sell that bond at the same time we're selling some bonds to do two other projects or several other projects that we're going to be doing in the next two years. And just to highlight those, first of all, the 69th Street project, if you recall, it's a stormwater project uh, over on the west end of town. Uh, there's been uh, significant amount of work up on the Portland Avenue. That's where we're going to remove the, the Portland Avenue out front here and put a new uh, bikeway sidewalks in a three-lane section. Um, and 66th Street project, there's been significant planning that's going on too. Now that's, that project won't occur until 2016, but we're, we're preparing the, the, the bond work to, to have that project funded also. And maybe... Uh, excuse me, what, what are you doing on 66th? Well, on You're six, preparing... Well, we're, right now we're preparing a plan. We're in the middle of the planning process. Okay. And, it, and, and the, the, the construction won't occur till 2016 and 17. Okay. And because part of that will occur in 2016, we're going to be, you know, preparing the bond yeah, work so okay. that we, we, our local uh, portion will be paid for through the bond. The council okay. may recall we had a discussion about whether we should use special sure. assessments or whether we should use this bonding process. Sure. This is the, the bonding process here that we're going to use to get the money for that instead of using special assessments. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. And finally on the back, and I should point out um, what's required legally for us to do this is just to have the public hearing on September 23rd and publish it in the newspaper. In order to have this robust marketing or community involvement process, we've tried to be upfront not only with the projects, but with this funding process. So we're mailing out a notice to every person in town so they know what projects are going on, what we're bonding for, and what those ramifications are. So, and, I, and at the top up here, it shows the 
the cost per household given the, the various uh, household, uh, depending on the uh, value of the house. And finally, I'd like to point out down at the, in the green section here, um, the total investment over five years of 77 million, and I'm gonna skip down two lines here. Of that, the, the Richfield share is only 28,000. So the, the most of that is coming from county and federal sources, outside sources. And in the, in the 15 year, or the, in the years 2015 and 16, the projects that are gonna be, that are identified are 55 million of that. The, the, the city's bonding portion is, is uh, 14 million. That's about a quarter of the pot. So this basic information is going out. It's a lot of projects, but we are in order to, to, to do this bonding, we have to hold a public hearing on September 23rd, and this is the mailed notice that the residents will receive. That's nice. Mm -hmm. nice. Be nice. I encourage people to attend that. Attend that meeting, Madam Mayor. Before Please. Mike leaves, could I could I ask him to just um, for everybody's benefit? So there's some digging going on in Vets Park along 66th Street, and there was along Portland Avenue as well. Can you just explain for people yeah. who might not be aware what's going on? Um, that's part of the Taft Legion Stormwater Treatment Project. Um, and the Minnehaha Creek Watershed District in conjunction with the city, uh, we're doing a project that because the land has gotten a lot more hard surface on it than it did years ago, in order to manage the, both the flood events and the water quality, we're doing two primary things. One of those would be to, to use infiltration pipes and take that, those peak events and, and, and get the water to percolate in the ground. And that's what's going on out there today. They're opening up the ground, putting in some pipes and some infiltration system, then putting it back. You probably won't even notice it when it's done. It, the pipes will be all co uh, covered and, and the sod replaced. And that's going to, during peak times, then remove the, the, the water. The other part of this that you don't see now but is part of the project is over at, Ta at Taft Park where we're gonna have this treatment device that's gonna remove the, the phosphorus from the water and clean up the water before it leaves the city to go to Nokoma. So okay. that's, that's what's going on there. And it, um, there was one other thing, somebody asked me about 66th Street. I, I talked about 66th Street and you'll see a lot of work going on at 66th Street out there today. That's Hennepin County have, has two more winters to try to get through the, the horrible condition of a road that they have to try to work with out there and their maintenance crews were having such a tough time they decided to try to do a, 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 a thin overlay to try to hold things in place until the reconstruction occurs mm -hmm. in 2016 and 17. So that's the work that's going on out there. Yeah. Council member. Um, well, as long as we're asking questions, um, there are cones and barriers going up that are sitting at my corner of my intersection where I work at 74th and Lindale. I'm assuming you're gonna do something there, but I don't know who's doing it and what's being done. I wish I knew exactly what, but I know <laughs> that there's a lot of, of uh, uh, curb and gutter repair that are, is going on this year in lots of locations throughout mm -hmm. the town in anticipation okay. of the mill and overlay. But I'm not certain that that's connected with that, but that's what I think. Okay. Council member. Okay. And do you want to <coughs> uh, comment on why we have red fire hydrants now or what's going on with that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah th there was, uh, I don't know, many years ago we ordered and got and put in yellow hydrants. That's for, I mean, I'm not even sure of the reasons. <laughs> and so now when we repaint them, the more traditional red fire hydrant is what we're going back to. Thank you. You know, uh, one of the things is that Center Point Energy is also doing some work. Gas line replacement. Yeah, <laughs> gas line replacement all over that, the place. That's right. and, yeah. Yeah. and so, yeah. mm -hmm. I, yeah, you know, so. I, and I just wanted to make a comment back to the sweet streets about what we're doing and how we're paying for it with our taxes and our bonding. I just had uh, a breakfast meeting with somebody from Edina, and they moved out of Edina because their taxes went from five thousand to ten thousand on their house because they had an assessment for their street replacement. Right. That's what it would be the impact to residents. We, we as a council made a decision to spread this out over the entire city. Mm -hmm. And I think this was a really good way to do it rather than assessing people large amounts of money <coughs> for the parcels of road in front of mm -hmm. them. So kudos to the staff and to the council up here for having some insight into that. It's a, it's a different way to do it, but it certainly makes it more palatable. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Hats off to Hometown Hits. Council Member Elliott. Yes. A <laughs> um, couple things. Um, I don't know, six or eight months ago, a uh, custom builder bought some lots from us in 72nd Logan and was somewhat upset when we told him we weren't going to allow three homes on it and two were put on instead. Um, 
and I think I think he eventually came to understand our reasoning and the reasoning of the the neighbors and I drove by during the continuing operation and construction of the project and if you drive by now uh, I, I think that not only did, did the neighbors uh, have a right in requesting that we reduce it to, to two lots, but the builder really did an excellent job. And I think it's rewarding to drive by. And we didn't have a conflict, but there was a dispute on how many houses would fit on 175 feet. And, and we held it to two, and I think it makes a really, really nice presentation. And I'm, I've got a couple things I want to say about staff. And, and I mean this sincerely because a little bit later on I may have some less kind words for staff. Um, the mayor and I were out a couple weekends ago um, walking 66th Street for a couple different reasons. Um, uh, one of them was to, to talk to the neighbors from Penn to Xerxes about the project and some of the projected plans that uh, I can only speak for myself. I had some severe, significant issues with. I think the mayor shared some of them, but it was more just a meet and greet and talk to them about what they felt about it. And we talked to actually some of the commercial property owners also. And two of the owners uh, I had worked with, or I had not had worked with, I'd suggested they come and visit with staff because they were trying to do some improvements on their property. And one worked extensively with uh, city planner Melissa Peelman and had nothing but wonderful things to say about her, the way she worked with him, got it done. and. You know, the mayor can speak to this, but I think she'll concur that, that he was really happy with the way the city worked with him and what he was able to accomplish in keeping his business here. And he intends to expand and be a, a, a contributing commercial member of the community for a long time into the future. And when you hear that, it, it's it's really nice to know that, that, you know, you don't have to pound on the table, you don't have to yell and scream, you don't have to argue. Occasionally you do, but you don't have to do it all the time. And it, and it, and it really, really worked on that particular case. The other case was, involved Betsy Osborne and in, in enforcement of some of the police regulations and everything. And um, when we had talked with this particular prop or commercial property owner, um, he had kind of run into what he thought was a, a, a fairly significant bump in the road. Had come over, met with Betsy, um, acting police chief Henthorn, and got some reassurances that they were going to try to work out and see what would happen. That was on a Sunday. And I think the, the, he was going to be back over here that week, or at least was expecting a call from Betsy. He hasn't called me, so I'm assuming it went well. Yes. And, and that's another case where you, you, you put them in touch with the proper staff members, and the staff goes out of their way if, if it's at all possible to make it work. And so we got two, two occasions where commercial property owners have tried to do some things, worked with staff, and it's, and it, it's worked out well. Um, with that being said, and, and we'll get to this later on, um, I'm, I may have harsher words for the city council later on today than I do for staff because it's from my perspective when the staff is given the flexibility and the room to work within the confines of the ordinances, they make it work. Mm -hmm. I think it's our obligation up here on the days to, to, to take a look at those ordinances and make them more user friendly so they can be adopted, they can be creative, they can be innovative, and they can do things that are going to keep our commercial, commercial businesses viable and still in this community. So. That's, that's it. Okay. Until later. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Councilmember Garcia. Okay, two things. Uh, let's see. One of them is that there will, there, there will be a business fair at the Richfield High School September the 13th. And that starts at 9.30 and will go to 2.30 p.m. And it's the first business trade fair that will happen in Richfield. And you'll get a chance... Businesses will get a chance to meet their customers and you'll get a chance to meet uh, also business leaders and, and people that work with all of these businesses, which include, you know, consultants and analysts and, and uh, other folks. And then the second thing is Pan PenFest is coming up, Open Streets, and that will be September the 21st from noon to 4 p.m., and that is uh, in council member Elliott's district. And I think this will give you, after we have our discussion later, um, this, you know, this later on in the agenda, um, I think it, you know, when you go to uh, PenFest, really kind of look at those businesses and see the challenges that are before us. And they're not easy challenges. They're, they require 
I think a lot of work and a lot of um, a lot of. I think we're going to have to put some, um, you know, kind of look at this in, in, for, with a different focus than we have in the past. And sometimes, you know, we just get real comfortable in the way we look at things, and and we need to really think outside the box in a lot of these areas. Okay, Councilmember Sandoff. Um, I was going to mention PenFest as well, so I would certainly encourage anyone who has an interest to go. It was a lot, of, a great event last year and will be this year as well. Um, we have a couple items on our agenda tonight, and so I know the information. Um, one of them is that St. Peter's is having their fall festival on October 4th, um, and that is from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m., and a family dance in the evening, 7 to 9. And the Richfield Foundation is having their fundraiser October 9th, which is a wine, craft beer, and cheese tasting in Houlihan's. And that is 6.30 to 9.30, and I'm sure the mayor is interested and will be there. Yep. Um, so both of those are events that are coming up. If you put them on your calendar now, you'll keep it open for, the, for when they come. Okay. Council member, the tenor. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention is the uh, half marathon we had in town. It was a gorgeous day, and uh, the... Uh, Mail came in at one hour, eight minutes and 26 seconds, and the one behind him was four minutes and 44 seconds behind him. I thought we'd lost the pack. I thought maybe they took a wrong turn or something. This <laughs> individual was fast. I mean, it was even tough uh, with the motorcycle to stay ahead of him. He was going through the nature center faster than I could. Uh, and then the female winner was uh, Kelsey Alba. Uh, she did one hour. 26 minutes and 34 seconds. And then I, I don't know if I mentioned him, but it was Dan Greeno who won the, uh, the marathon. I also want to mention I had a great time at the Mitsubishi dealer the other night where we went to the grand opening, and so we have a new dealer in town, or back in town. Yes, back in town. Welcome and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing what goes on there when Honda pops up. So. Do you know that those two winners were both Richfield residents? They were. Yes, the two top, the male and they female. They must have pre-ran it because they knew it. <laughs> yes, they knew it good. Well, for some of us that are challenged in, in the physical <laughs> way, you know, we, we were there to hand out water. And, you know, and I was, I was just as excited, you know, were those people that were just barely going. Because, I mean, it really takes a lot. And, you yeah. know, you've got to admire that, that they're, they stick mm -hmm. to it. Was you ran it with your husband? Did you know? I, I did. Saw you there. I did. Saw you there. And I want you to know that uh, that I am a trionic woman, and I ran it anyway. Yes. Good. <laughs> See, there you go. Sort of run. Yeah. yeah. Fast walk. At least a three million dollar one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd ask for a council approval of yeah. the agenda. May Excuse I me, one, one more other thing. thing please, that, please. Uh, oh. And this is Fine. once again, it's kudos to a the department um, we got a, a email from city manager last week about something that's known as swatting which is hey, can you get them in the mic is a which is a horrible thing that that involves some yeah. some phone calls alleging serious mayhem and mishap in a, in a house and and requiring an enormous police response because it's it's really a scary thing I didn't even think anything about it and turned out, I don't know if anybody was around when I ran for office, but I had a picture on my front step with 50 of my blood relatives that live in Richfield and as coincident would happen, it was a relative of mine that was swatted. Oh. Um, and my daughter came over and, and, and mentioned to me, did you hear what happened? And I said, I said, no, and she started talking about it. And I said, well, that's what I got the, the message from Steve. Long story short, it was traumatic, involved three police departments, um, uh, my niece came out of her house after being woken from a dead sleep at 1.30 in the morning to a, a significant police presence, which is heavily armed because the allegations were uh, murder, mayhem, and a bomb in the house. So you can imagine getting woken up in the middle of the night with that being happening in your home with nothing going on. Um, once the, the area was secured um, and, and everything was done, needless to say, there, there was a, a fair amount of of nervousness and everything else. The long story short, what I really want to, to, to give applaud to is uh, Assistant Police Chief or Acting Police Chief Henthorne in his department. There have been numerous follow-up calls from departments 
from Richfield asking to make sure everybody is okay. How are you doing? Are you passed? And so the follow-up, the, 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 the incident itself was, was without question traumatic. But it, but it appears, at least based on what my, my niece told me, is, is the follow-up and ensuring that, that the residents understood what happened and, and anything we can help them with, the, the offer is there. So I, I really appreciate that. Didn't have, you, nobody knows it was my relative or just a, a regular resident, but the way we've treated them after that is, has been really laudable and I think really speaks well about the department and how you, how, how you consider our citizens when they go through something like that and following up, make sure that they're okay. So I, I, really, I know she appreciates it and I certainly do also. Okay, thank you. Um, at this time, I'd ask for council's approval of the agenda with one caveat that we are going to move item nine after item six because it actually is a public hearing and belongs there. So I'll be calling on you then, Council Member Elliott. Do I have a motion? So, so moved. moved. Second. Second. <laughs> All in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Um, item five is a public hearing for the consideration of the issuance of an on-sale wine and 3.2. Consent calendar, yeah. Excuse mm -hmm. me, oh, consent calendar, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. I'm sorry, I just yeah. skipped right over you, city manager. Yeah. I, I was being pretty quiet here, so I thought maybe. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm sorry, sorry about that. Go ahead and do that. He was really asleep, that's okay. <laughs> oh, okay, all right, yeah. <laughs> Those snaps only <laughs> happen during the daytime in his office. <laughs> <laughs> Quite same thank, thank you, Mayor, members of the City Council, <laughs> especially <laughs> Councilmember Garcia for that. Uh, the consent calendar for those in the audience contains several separate items which are acted upon by the City Council in one motion. Once the consent calendar has been approved, the individual items and the recommended actions will also have been approved. No further council action on these items would be necessary. Item A is consideration of the approval of a contract with Alpha Video and Audio Incorporated to install audiovisual upgrades in the Bartholomew and Heredia rooms of the Richfield Municipal Center in the amount of $41,744. I'm going to stop for a second and say that when we have now in the future a situation where I know some council members uh, need to travel and still want to be a, a part, an active part of the meeting, uh, we pretty much had had the video kind of figured out but not the audio. This is going to be able to uh, connect anybody in uh, who is um, attending the meeting from anywhere, basically, um, much, much, much easier. Everybody will get to hear everybody, um, and um, I think it's going to be a, a much, much better experience. The room, the, the Bartholomew room, will be set up to do any, any kind of a meeting we need when this is all done. We're going to take the other equipment, then, that's in there and move it into the smaller Heredia room, so uh, it'll be... Um, equipped then for uh, a lot of other kinds of meetings, not quite as sophisticated as what's in Bartholomew, but um, all I can say is this is gonna be one, uh, one heck of a, a place to be able to hold meetings when all this stuff is done. And I would say that all of this money is not coming from, uh, from, the, from taxpayers uh, at Valorum property taxes. This was a designated money, money that was in the last uh, franchise agreement with uh, the cable company that can only be used uh, for this kind of capital equipment, so it's being used exactly for what the purpose was. Okay. Sorry. No, to that that's a. Oh, excuse me. Go ahead. That, that's that's another thing. I think you you really have shown initiative, because I know that you know you like to pinch pennies. <laughs> yes, I <laughs> and, do. <laughs> and, you know, and and uh, I I think that you've been really smart in the way you've, uh, you know, you've done that, and uh, you know that really helps us have bragging rights. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Item B is consideration of the approval of a temporary on-sale intoxicating liquor license for the Church of St. Peter at 6730 Nicolette Avenue South for their annual fall festival, which is scheduled to take place on October 4th, 2014. Item C is consideration of the approval of a temporary on-sale intoxicating liquor license for the Richfield Foundation for the wine, craft, beer, and cheese tasting events to be held on October 9th, 2014. Uh, item D is consideration of approval of setting a public hearing to be held on September 23rd, 2014 for the consideration of a new on-sale wine license for Last Call Operating Company Incorporated doing business as Champs Americana to be located at the Ice Arena at 636 East 66th Street. And that goes with the legislation we got, the special legislation to allow the intoxicating sale, uh, uh, sale of intoxicating liquor only for the Junior Hockey League. That's that semi-professional hockey league games mm -hmm. that occur there. 
Item E is consideration of the approval of Minnesota Department of Transportation lease agreement number 27710 with amendment three for the continued use of excess land along I I-494 next to Best Buy campus for the continued use as a parking lot and a transit station. And then finally, item F, consideration of the approval of the first reading of an ordinance amending subsection 54705 sub 4 and subsection 547.11 related to the consideration of a variance, a variance application. And that would conclude tonight's consent calendar. I'll move the calendar. Second. Other discussion? All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Now item five. This is a public hearing in consideration of an issuance of a new on-sale wine and 3.2% malt liquor license for Henry Thu doing business as Red Pepper Chinese Restaurant at 2910 West 66th Street. On May 6th, the city received an application materials for a new on-sale wine and 3.2% malt liquor license for Henry Thu doing business as, uh, as Red Pepper Chinese Restaurant. All required information and documents have been received. All licensing fees have been paid. Henry Thu re recently purchased the Red Pepper Chinese Restaurants from Chang's Red Pepper Inc. doing business as Red Pepper Chinese Restaurant. Effective May 1st, 2014, Henry Thu is the sole owner doing business as Red Pepper Restaurant. All required information and documents have been provided. All licensing fees have been received. Public safety has reviewed all required information and documents and has not found any basis for denial. The city council has previously granted licenses at this location. And of course, there is no background information since this is a, a new owner. So um, this is a public hearing. I'll open the public hearing. Would anyone like to come forward to speak on behalf or or comment on this item on the agenda? Is the owner, the new owner here? Yes. Would you like to come up and say some words about your wonderful restaurant? Please, just introduce yourself. He'll help you. State the name of your business and the address there. Hi, my name is Henry. I'm the new owner at Red Pepper Chinese Restaurant over in Richfield. Um, it's a family uh, operated business. Um, it's my first business. I'm very excited. And since May 1st, uh, we've been working very hard to maintain the business. Uh, we've added new items to the menus, um, added new chefs, so I'm very nervous. It's my first time here, so. Okay, <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else like to come forward? Move to close. Second. All those in favor signify by aye. 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 The public hearing is closed. So at this time, I'll make a motion to approve the issuance of a new on-sale wine and 3.2% malt liquor license for Henry Thu doing business as Red Pepper Chinese Restaurant at 2910 West 66th Street. Second. All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Councilmember Fitzhenry, you have item six. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, the item under consideration is a public hearing. Uh, concerning a request for an amendment to a conditional use permit and a variance at 7450 Penn Avenue. The proposed amendment requests site changes at the South Education Center to add a youth soccer field and accessory structure. A variance is requested to allow a six foot tall fence. Uh, do you want me to go through the executive summary before we open it up? as a public hearing or? Well, since it's a new item, maybe just a okay. little bit, yeah. Uh, the Intermediate School District 287 operates the South Education Center located at 7450 Penn Avenue. The City Council approved and amended conditional use permit, known as a CUP, for a new school facility in 2006. District 287 has applied for a CUP amendment to allow construction of a new recreational soccer field walking track, and accessory building. The 150 foot by 210 foot field would be similar than a full, or smaller, excuse me, than a full size soccer field and intended for younger players. The facility would be shared with Richfield Parks and Recreation Department. The proposed field meets all requirements for issuance of a amended conditional use permit. 
The zoning code restricts fences to four feet in height forward of the principal building. The applicant is requesting to allow a six foot tall fence along the southern perimeter of the soccer field to prevent soccer balls from leaving the area and creating a hazard on the nearby trail and road. Thank you. So I. Uh, this is a public hearing. We'll open the public hearing. <coughs> Would anyone like to comment on this? I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. All those in favor signify by aye. 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 The public hearing is closed. Did staff want to make any comments before I uh, go ahead and make the motion? No, okay. you've uh, covered everything. Okay. Thank you. So I make a motion that we approve an amended conditional use permit and variance to allow construction of a soccer field and accessory structures at an existing educational facility located at 7450 Penn Avenue South. I'll second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? I had a question. Oh, please. Just a question. Um, I, I just wondered, I mean, I, and maybe it's just because you shoot your balls towards the goals, um, north and south, um, if they were concerned at all along the Penn Avenue side for the height of the fence. Uh, actually, that's not where the balls usually go, but go ahead. Well, I could address that, um, okay. Madam Mayor and council members. My understanding is that the school would be amenable to adding netting okay. um, if that were the case in the future, and the, the zoning code would permit that. So okay. it's one of those cases where uh, it's kind of a wait and see. If it's a problem, then they could address it through netting, and if it's not, um, leave as is. Okay. I think that's correct. Yes. Because the, the traffic on the south side is pretty minimal. It's only into the church mm -hmm. and along the trail. So, okay. Okay. All those in favor? By aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Um, item 9 has been moved up. Council member? This matter is a public hearing to consider a request for an amended conditional use permit, a variance, and an appeal of a staff determination of at 6736 Penn Avenue, Fireside Pizza. The proposal contemplates a 1,074 square foot building addition, reduction of existing parking, a variance from parking requirements, and an appeal of the Community Development Director's determination that odor control is required due to the addition of certain commercial cooking equipment. Um, briefly, the executive summary indicates that Fireside Pete's owner, Rich Thompson, has applied for a number of land use approvals in order to construct a 1,074 square foot building addition at 6736 Penn Avenue South. The addition will create a new entrance lobby off the existing parking lot and a new kitchen at the rear of the building, increasing the overall size of the building by more than 50%. Uh, this work will also include a complete remodel of both the interior and outside dining spaces. Uh, staff is purportedly supportive of the ap applicant's desire to renovate and improve his property. However, the purpose of the zoning code is to balance the needs of the individual and those of the neighborhood. Staff recommends approval of the conditional use permit amendment and front setback variance to allow the expansion with the condition that the applicant secure agreements related to the additional required parking. Staff is recommending denial of the applicant's request to add cooking equipment that will intensify odors without the addition of an odor control system. Uh, the remainder of the executive summary talks, uh, I think staff is probably better to talk about that. And uh, they can either talk about it now or after we close the public hearing, I'll defer to your, your choice, Mayor. Staff showed us what we were, so the audience would know at the same time what we're talking about. The staff can. Sure, uh, thank you, Madam Mayor and Council Members. Um, you know, really there, there are two issues that uh, are kind of um, need to be addressed as, uh, through this. One is the parking. Uh, the existing restaurant is uh, uh, just shy of 2,400 square feet and would require 24 parking stalls. Um, we can reduce that by 10% for transit that's available there, which we've done. And uh, the proposed addition of uh, 1,074 square feet increases the total occupancy of the building from 131 to 143 people, uh, and the required number of required stalls um, would move to 29. This, is, this includes the 10% transit reduction. Code allows an additional reduction for adjacent on-street parking 
if a number of criteria are met, including the principal building being within 20 feet of the street and a primary interest along that street. In this case, the principal building meets these and the applicant has applied for and staff supports this request um, for considering the on-street parking. Uh, still with that, um, the applicant has left needing six additional uh, spaces to comply with city regulations. The code provide, provides uh, some options for the applicant. One is to have a parking study done, to you know, have an outside professional come in and determine whether that's needed or not. Uh, the second would be to get permission from, uh, and, and it goes beyond permission, to have an agreement, a legally binding agreement with neighboring property owners or nearby property owners to allow them to park some staff cars, uh, employee cars, uh, to reduce the, the parking need. In a lot of cases, this works really well because there might be nearby businesses that have different peak hours. Um, in this case, the owner has um, talked to some neighboring property owners. Um, staff is a little concerned that um, those neighboring property owners don't have enough to meet their own parking requirements and that the, the peaks um, don't work as well as we'd like to see them work. Um, having said that though, the, um, in discussions with the planning commission, uh, discussions among staff, um, I think people are open to exploring options on Penn Avenue. This is a recurring theme on Penn Avenue. Um, and I, while we haven't seen a lot on 66th Street, um, that's because we haven't seen a lot of applications. And I suspect that uh, on 66th Street and parts of Lindale and Nicolette, uh, these, the same thing would happen. So um, what the planning commission recommended was that uh, the, uh, the, as far as parking is concerned, to go ahead uh, and approve this with the condition that uh, staff tries to work out a, um, some code changes that would make the parking work. What this re would require in this case would be um, to reduce the parking requirement on this site by 21%. Um, going from 29 spaces to 23 spaces, and you know the thinking is it might be um, it might be reasonable to look at all of this portion of Penn Avenue and say, uh, because of the nature of how it developed historically, um, on top of the the reductions we're giving for transit, on top of the reductions we're giving for on street parking, we further reduce the requirements on Penn. Um, so this would leave it in a little bit of limbo, though, with the property owner to say that uh, we would grant this and go ahead and, and work out the details later. Um, but if that's something that the city council is willing to do and the applicant is willing to accept, that's something staff would uh, could work with. The other issue here is the odor control. Okay. And I wanna be clear on staff's position on odor control. Staff is not of the opinion that odor control is good, bad, indifferent, otherwise. Uh, what staff is really looking for here is to make sure we, uh, we understand the policy uh, and that it's applied consistently. The um, zoning code, the, what's stated in the zoning code is, is kind of simple and really it would be nice if it was more, um, more descriptive. Uh, the zoning code says that um, environmental effects must be mitigated including odors that would be detrimental to the comfort of surrounding properties. Uh, the way that this has been implemented, I think since the late 80s, um, maybe early 90s, uh, certainly I've been here since 98, certainly as long as I've been here, is, uh, and there were, some, there were some cases that precipitated this. The way that we have enforced this is to say that if a business is adjacent, immediately adjacent to um, residential, uh, and uh, that's either abutting it or within 150 feet, that uh, odor control would be required anytime the um, anytime intensive cooking devices are added or uh, installed new, and that's been the case with a lot of properties in the recent past, um, and it's also consistent with the way some other, uh, but definitely not all other cities do this. Um, when I talk about restaurants in the recent past that have done this, uh, some of those include Pizza Luce, Miyama. Andale, Lynn 65, and El Teoban. Those are the kind of the cases within the last year or so. 
that have done it, um, maybe two years. Um, again, if, uh, if we're hearing some other policy direction from the city council, we will certainly enforce it in that way. But again, we, uh, we need, um, from a legal standpoint, uh, and just from a, a staffing standpoint, we need to, uh, whatever we apply um, to one restaurant, we need to apply to all others moving forward. Um, in the case of, of this one, um, it well, let, let me go back a little bit. We addressed this a, to a smaller degree, uh, maybe uh, two months ago, with a Korean um, yeah. adult daycare uh, on Penn Avenue as well. And the issue there was um, they were adding fryer and or a grill top. And um, again, the way that it's been in, uh, enforced in the past, staff had said that uh, it would be required in this case and, and they appealed that, came to the city council. Uh, the direction we got from the city council at, on that case was, gosh, uh, couldn't you staff go back and look at this a little closer and see if there's some compromise solution. Uh, we spent a great deal of time, and we being uh, myself, the city attorney, the city planner, and the chief building official, uh, uh, and in discussions with the applicant, uh, you, Lee, uh, we spent a great deal of time talking about the issues. On that one, I, I think the issues were different. Uh, what the applicant was arguing was that it shouldn't be required in, in their case because of very limited hours of operation and because of the limited clientele. And so that's, in our discussions, that's where we were focused on trying to um, find solutions working around those two concepts. Uh, in the case of the applicant uh, tonight that's appealing, uh, a number of things have happened. One is, um, you know, we've, uh, we've tried to point them in the direction of some uh, potential funding sources through uh, open to business. Uh, I do not believe he um, pursued those, but uh, that was made available to him. And then both the planning commission and staff have, uh, have mentioned the possibility of just trying to ensure that the building could, uh, could be adapted to accept odor control in the future. And then if that was, were the case, um, having a discussion with the city council about not requiring odor control at the current time, but if there were complaints, if there were issues in the future, that it be added in later. Uh, the applicant, to my knowledge, never really responded uh, to whether that was uh, possible or not, at least not, uh, not to me. So I'm not sure um, in terms of the enforcement as it's been done in the, in the past, if there's a you know, quote unquote compromise solution um, if there if there is that people want to discuss, staff is certainly open to to talking about that. So I think that those were the issues as I saw them. Yeah, yeah. Madam Mayor, members of the council, if I could add, um, because I've been here even longer than going back to 1998, my recollection is that there was a time that we didn't do this, and um, my recollection is that there was something to do with the Champs restaurant mm -hmm. and the housing units above Champs. And there wasn't odor control in the beginning, uh, again, if my recollection is correct. And, then, and there was a huge cry from the people uh, who were living there saying, whoa, wait a minute. We're smelling this stuff all the time. Uh, you've got to do something about it. And, uh, and the city council at that time, if, if I'm correct, I, I believe that was the genesis of the city council going back and saying, wait a minute. Yes, you're going to have to do something. I then remember... And again, I, because I'd, I wasn't the city manager at the time, and I wasn't dealing in CD at the time, I, I, I know there was another time when they were looking at um, a, a similar kind of issue, and that was behind the strip um, on Nicolette Avenue at, uh, bet uh, between 65th and 66th. And I'm not sure if that's before Eastern Buffet went in or what was mm. there at that time. But I know the residents were very concerned and had come to the city council uh, and we're pretty vocal about making sure that somebody was going to address the fact that those odors weren't going to be floating into their neighborhood. And so, and so what's happened is with that same ordinance and with those um, ideas in place, the city council, that city council, um, directed staff to proceed at looking at making sure that these odor control units were installed in restaurants so that we wouldn't have 
that kind of conflict with neighborhoods uh, going forward. And that's consistently what, what staff has done. The previous couple city managers before me have done that. Uh, the previous um, community development directors before John Stark have done that. And now it comes down to uh, that was a policy and uh, that was a direction that the city took at that particular point in time. And until staff is told, take a different direction, I mean, that's what we're going to do because, I mean, we're programmed to, to, to deal with what uh, we are supposed to address on a fair and what we believe is a consistent basis. And we are looking for ways um, to, to make things work. But again, to be fair and consistent on how we treated other uh, restaurants over the past many years, probably going back to the early 1990s, that's the policy in place. Now that's not to say the policies can't change, but you know that is again that's a policy decision that staff can't make on the fly, and something that you know that a city council makes after after due consideration and deliberation on it. And so, whatever you do, if you're going to change that policy, of course that's what we would look at going forward, and we're willing to do whatever the city council wants us to do, um, to the best of our ability to to to, to complete. So. It really, I'm, I really can't say a whole lot more other than I think you have all of the background on it that I can think of. Yes. Madam Mayor? Please. I'd just like to know if we've had uh, any current complaints in the current operation there, and what type of venting they have now, if no. that's possible. To my knowledge, there hasn't been any. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a public hearing. The public hearing is, a hearing is open. Would somebody like to come forward to speak on this issue? Please state your name and uh, location of business uh, and speak toward it. Our name of an address. My name is Steve Hurwitz. I reside at 7001 Morgan Avenue, South Richfield, Minnesota. I came here because uh, I've patronized uh, this place quite a, quite a bit. I've gone by it. There's no smell that it's any different than any other rep restaurant and people have lived with it since 1960 something. And I find it interesting when city councils take this uh, approach. For many years, I served with the Minnesota Department of Transportation as a relocation officer and faced many organizations just like this. And common sense usually prevailed because people are being pushed out of their business, obviously, got to move or do something. Here's a gentleman who's in a business who's trying to make a couple bucks. He's not trying to get rich, he's not trying to be a multimillionaire, but he's a pillar of the community. He gives charity everywhere, and I'm, I'm sure that a good share of you have in some way benefited from him in some small way, and I don't mean graffiti, but he's helped you out, and he's helped the city out. He's not asking for a hell of a lot. I heard this <laughs> gentleman over here speak about, oh, we offered him something. I've heard that from many city planners and planners, and that's not disrespectful to you, sir. But you're telling him, well, we're looking for a way for him to be funded. That's nice, except he's got to pay it back. That's not fair. You're taking away his opportunity to increase his ability to survive in times that are becoming more and more competi competitive. I'm asking the city council to forget the concept that we got a rule. No. You have the capacity to do what you want. And you don't look at it from the standpoint of a, a vote. You don't look at it at the standpoint of that's the way you want it. We don't need another empty storefront in Richfield. We have enough. We don't need to see a business that has survived for so many years be pushed out because they've got to put a scrubber in or th they're missing six parking places. I don't buy that. Kay. I think that's being very small. And I think this organization, I know most of you, some of you on a first name basis, some of you on a I'd like to kill them basis, but that's your, that's your prerogative. However, I really believe using your infinite wisdom 
and the compassion for a business that's been here for over 50 years, that you would grant the man a variance for the six spaces. And I'll bet you the community probably wouldn't argue with the smell of a good pizza. We've got to treat our Richfield people that have been here and paid their dues here better than the new people, not better, but as well as they've treated us over the years. Okay. So I ask for your compassion and give him the variance and be done with it and let the man get on with his life. Thank Thanks you. for listening. Thank you. This is a public hearing. Would anyone else like to come forward? Please state your name and address. Edward Noonan, Noonan Construction, uh, 5400 France Avenue South. A general contractor representing uh, Rich here, Mayor, Councilman, staff. I have to say here in 38 years of building, I've been in front of the city of Minneapolis hundreds of times, been in front of the city of Edina, Bloomington. It's been a true pleasure coming into the city of Richfield here with these plans. From the early ARC committee meetings, Mr. Elliott, just to on your shirt tails here, thanking the staff. Melissa's been wonderful with communication, uh, the group that we had together for the ARC, all the way through the opportunity to come visit with you here tonight. I just wanted to share any insight I can as a builder on the plans if you have specific questions here. Uh, again, we're looking at a building that's been here since the 60s, a business that's been here for many years. We're not asking to increase seating capacity. In fact, we're decreasing seating capacity. What we're doing is health and safety, fire suppression system is being added to this property. It does not exist right now. Uh, handicapped accessible restrooms that do not exist right now to make the building accessible. Uh, accessible entranceway that does not exist right now. And updating the health and safety in the kitchen that exists right now. We're not asking to add additional spacing here. You know, we're widening sidewalks, we're doing landscaping and signage change here that will only enhance this business here. Uh, the staff is doing a wonderful job interpreting the code and supporting us and trying to come back with some options here. Um, I just can't see supporting even a rough in of uh, order control here. If he did nothing but change the sign outside on the building here, it's a change to the building we'd be asking for. It's a pizza restaurant, we need to add odor control. It's not because we're adding onto the building here, but any alterations to the kitchen would require odor control, we were told by Melissa anyway. So what I'm asking is, again, like the last show, I'm just shared with you right here, just put your heart and soul into it here as a private business owner. You know the restaurant, you know Rich here, what he's trying to do here for the community. It's a major investment here. And pennies make dollars in this here, and it's a very tough environment today for a small restaurant to stay competitive. And he's willing to make the investment in the community here. He's had options with surrounding cities that would welcome a business like this moving into it. This is his home, though. He said this is where he wants to be, and he owns a building here. So I just asked some consideration and support of what the staff was asking here, is giving them the right tools or the verbiage that's necessary to consider this as an option here of accepting it as what it is right now without odor control. <clears throat> the parking here, I think the staff is working together with you on, and uh, I'm just here to answer any other questions. Thank you. This is a public hearing. Would Madam, anyone else like to come forward? Madam Mayor, just while um, th there's a transition, maybe I can address a couple of those things Please, really you. quickly. Um, with regards to the capacity of the building, yeah, the, I think that's true that what they're intending to do is um, actually reduce the capacity, or it would reduce the seating. Um, and the way that the code used to work, um, maybe as recently as like six or seven years ago, was that the parking was tied to seating. Uh, what would happen though is uh, applicants, and in at least a couple of occasions, applicants would come in and say, yeah, we're doing 20 seats, therefore we need X number of parking spaces. Uh, and then, you know, three weeks later, there'd be 24 seats. And then three weeks later, there'd be 28 seats. And, uh, and so the uh, staff and city council planning commission changed that to be building occupant level. Um, I'm sorry, the square footage of the building. And I'm certain that there's a solution on the parking piece of it. Um, and maybe there's some way to, to state that in the future that it's some, uh, either or, it's either square footage or the uh, seating, there would have to be some teeth in the seating for that to work. Um, with regards to the, what's triggering the odor control, I wanted to touch on that as well. The, the only thing that's triggering the odor control here 
is a an addition of equipment of cooking equipment. So if the <coughs> if the existing um, cooking equipment were to stay as is, even if the building were to expand or contract or signage changes, parking changes, that would not um, require any change in odor control or any addition of odor control. Uh, it's the addition of uh, deep fryers and uh, griddle fryers that are not currently in the building that um, would, in this case, um, require it as staff has, um, has enforced it in the past. So I just wanted to clear up those. Okay. Good evening, Angie Schaefbauer, president of the Richfield Chamber, 6601 Lindell Avenue South. And I'm just here tonight to uh, speak on behalf of the members of the Richfield Chamber and the business community. I think a lot of my comments would mirror what have been said over and over. Um, we heard tonight the importance of Penn Avenue and for everyone to take a look at the businesses up and, up and down Penn Avenue. This uh, food scrubber, or sorry, odor scrubber um, concept is imperative for the success of most restaurants in Richfield. And it's really, I think, important for city council to take a step back and look at this with a new set of eyes. And, and uh, the, as council member Elliott said previously, the one size does not fit all concept here. And we need to really work at finding some way to either scalably work within this ordinance, rewrite the code somehow, um, the other thing, I, the chamber is uh, working with the Minnesota Restaurant Association on this topic, and we're going to have some meetings to discuss what are other communities doing. It's my understanding that Richfield is one of three in the metro area that use odor scrubbers, and I, I, I find that very interesting. So if I would just implore the city council to take a step back, really examine this issue, and hopefully work with the chamber and some other organizations to come to <coughs> a, a good solution. Thanks. Thank you. Public hearing is still open. Would anyone else like to come forward? Anyone else would like to come forward to speak on this matter? I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Public hearing is closed. Council member? You know, I don't want to take off on a soliloquy, but there's a lot of things that need to be said about this. Um, and, and like I said, I, you know, people have better things to do than to listen to me, but I want to go back. We moved to Richfield in 1985, and I live at 6720 Oliver Avenue South, so I'm within the mailing distance of Fireside for odor control. Um, I visited Fireside Pete's in 1961 with Dave Miller, who owned it at that time and was, was on the same football team I was. I've, I've lived there since 1985, never smelled anything. But that, that's small in comparison to, to what hasn't been going on on Penn Avenue since 1985. When I moved in, there was a moratorium because it was under study. What are we going to do with Penn Avenue and revitalize it? 1985. It's 2014 now. We've got guidelines in place. There's been this commission, that commission, and not one damn thing has happened. Not one. And we're sitting up here now uh, looking at Rich Thompson who wants to put $500,000, $600,000 into his business so he can stay competitive with Pizza Luce, with Lynn 65, and everything else. You know, at the Planning Commission, Ms. Peelman uh, indicated that there's not one restaurant that's put a scrubber in in the last couple of years that's comparative to Fireside. A restaurant that's been in Richfield and owned two owners since 1961, Everyone else has come in new and, and is with our, our odor control that was put in 25 years ago, which for, for some strange reason, if it was such a wonderful idea for Richfield, why well, have only two other communities out of the 585 in the state of Minnesota adopted it? We got some additional information. We know Edina, who we've had our differences with, <laughs> but they know how to treat their business people and they know how to have a vibrant restaurant tour and community service in terms of restaurants. They don't currently have any zoning or health regulations. They say exhaust cannot be directly vented into the adjacent property, however, it does not address orders. If a complaint is received regarding orders, it is the city policy to investigate the complaint and determine if mitigation is required. 
I'm the one that made the comment about one size doesn't fit all in regards to the, the lady that wanted to have some wok cooking on 67th and Penn. Uh, that was on July 8th, I recall. But at that time, we didn't recommend they work with her to try to find an accommodation. What, what we suggested was is you take a look at that and see how viable something that is 25 years old it still is in this community, particularly on Penn Avenue where you got lots that are smaller than most of our residential lots. So I, I, some, of the, some of the comments you know, that are made you know, about we really, really endorse people trying to improve the, the business community on Penn Avenue and then tell them that, well, you know, if, if your actions are what causes the need for a variance, you can't get it. So tell me how someone on a lot, 75 by about 110 feet, is supposed to improve his property, add some amenities, expand his menu, and then try to earn his dollar back when he's got $120,000 tacked on top of the cost of renovation that's not going to earn one penny in profit or gross profit for him. So we're sitting up here, you know, trying to figure out, oh, my, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? I tell you what we can do. I, I mentioned earlier that staff, when they're given the tools and the ability to be creative and innovative, can work with our commercial business owners and make it work. We're the ones that are required to take the risk and step forward and do what's necessary so they've got the tools they need to keep our commercial business owners vibrant, able to expand, and able to stay competitive with the people that are coming in to, to contribute to our community. If we sit up here and say, God, Rich, love you, love pizza, put the scrubber in, you know, I don't know if, if he stays, I don't know if he goes, but what I do know is that he's no longer competitive and he's going to go out of business. He's either going to do it voluntarily or involuntarily, but, but we are the death knell for, for Fireside Pizza, and what that will mean is we'll have six vacant commercial properties between 66th Street and mid-block 67th Street, and they're going to continue to fall because there is not one business owner that will put one dollar into that property, knowing that they're going to come in front of us, and we're going to have ordinances that are going to say, love you to death, can help you. So we either step out of the box and do what we can do, and grant all the variances and let him do what he wants to do and create a larger commercial tax base and give us a brand new restaurant and a new face on, on 67th and Penn. Or we can walk, watch him go away and we've got another vacant lot that we're going to try to fill. So, I mean, I don't think there's if, ors, ands, or buts. I don't think we can say, okay, do it now, Rich, and we're going to change this. Maybe we'll change it next month. Maybe we'll change it next year. It's going to be too late. So we can either do what we were elected to do, and that's be creative, be innovative, and keep Richfield moving forward, or we can be stuck in 1998 when we passed an ordinance that it makes absolutely no sense under these circumstances and for that piece of property. Council member. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I guess I would submit that we should think of a grandfather clause. Um, I don't know if there is a possibility in that, but we have an existing business that uh, is not going through a radical change. I understand the deep fryer and the griddle may change the substance that comes out that, um, but we do have a business that had no complaints from what I heard in the uh, community here. Uh, they've been a decent business. They've really went through with a lot with the fire suppression system. We know how we had that battle with that to get that in there. I feel that they put their foot forward and really said we're trying to do the right thing here. And I would submit that uh, we grandfather them in under this as, as an existing building if that's possible. Since they did exist before, they're not going higher with the seating limit. They're upgrading their equipment, but I would say that the newer equipment would probably uh, submit less order and I would ask if there is a possibility we could use a grandfather clause in this case and let it go through. Please um, step. Yeah, Mayor and council members, I, I don't know if I'd use the term grandfather clause, um, but I think you could in the in the way the ordinance is written say that um, pre-existing restaurants are exempted. Um, the, the one case that I am aware of where a pre-existing restaurant was required to do it 
uh, was with a change of ownership. Uh, and that's where the Eastern Buffet was and the Rich Hill yeah. Shops mm -hmm. at uh, Nicollet and 66th. Mm -hmm. They left and uh, El, Talib, uh, El Tehaban uh, came in and as a new restaurant, I believe they reused some of the equipment and added uh, some new equipment as well. Uh, they were required uh, under the way, again, it had been enforced over the years uh, to go in uh, to, to do the scrubber, which they did. Uh, but certainly that's when we talk about a policy change is at your discretion, that's a policy change you could make to say pre-existing restaurants would be exempted. What would be okay, what would be the? Can I add to that. Is, is there yeah. any chance if we did that? Because I, you know, I know that Rich is a good community player. If we did have a a, a, a good many uh, complaints, because it is changing yeah. from a fryer. My only thing caveat is that we would be able to go back and say, hey, we're having all these complaints. We're going to have to ask you to do something um, because of the neighbors. And I believe that's how Edina does it. They go yes, back after the fact. Yes, my understanding is that's how Edina does I, it. And I think that's meeting Rich halfway. And I'd be happy to do that. Um, I don't know how you enforce that, how you, uh, what grounds you'd say to, say to a business that's not asking you for anything at that time in the future. Um, so we'd have to figure that out. I don't know how that would work. Well, I'm sure Edina's done it in the past, possibly. I don't know. Council member? Well, just what if Edina's done it, mitigated it. What have they expected? Yeah, and I, I actually I don't think that they have. I think what their mm -hmm. uh, ordinance says is that they could uh, oh, go back okay. later and ask mm -hmm. for it to be done. I don't think that's been the case. We, you know, the one thing is, is mm -hmm. in, in Richfield, I think one of the reasons this happened is because so many of our our commercial areas were actually residential areas before and have now developed in commercial, and they're very close to other residential areas where. There's there's some of that in Edina, but not anywhere to the to the a lot of the restaurants are in commercial areas. They have enough room to dissipate that. But on the other hand, equipment <coughs> in restaurants has gotten better. They move more volumes of air. They dilute better. Um, I know it's better, and if you're putting in new equipment, it's going to probably be better. Um, again, it's going to be cleaning and keeping up on it. That's going to make a difference as well. So if I, I, if think I may, Mayor, room. just just as a suggestion. Um, Fireside's been there since 1961. There's two restaurants now, and I think John, or excuse me, Mr. Stark, is familiar with the area on 56 and Xerxes because I think when uh, the gas station next door to Rich's was changing, you used the gas station there as an example. Lola restaurant, two restaurants went side by side in a in a old dairy store on 56 and Xerxes, which directly across the street from residential properties. Okay. It's a pizza place for one. Lola's is a pizza place. Next door is a sandwich and, and can't remember what the menu is. But that's how this applied on 56 and Xerxes, which is not dissimilar to 67th and 10. You have residential properties right across the street. And this ordinance allowed those, these people to go in there. And the way it reads is if you get the complaints, you go investigate, and then you try to find a way to mitigate it if it's serious enough. It seems to me in this day and age, with the, the, the expansion and hell, we've talked about bringing restaurants in, into to, to the neighborhoods, the neighborhood restaurant where you can sit down. We've talked about turning it into Grand Avenue, 50th in France. There's residences all around there. Edina's made it work. Uptown's made it work. St. Louis Park on the west side has residents. They've made it work. And, and my whole point is, about one size doesn't fit all. We need to give staff the flexibility to make it work for Richfield also. Well, Madam Mayor, if I might, Please. just an observation. <clears throat> this is, whether it's odor control or parking or a number of other things, this is a recurring theme. And I, I think I've said the same thing every time. To me, the way I look at this, and this is what makes Richfield such, a, such an interesting place, is it's really the conflict between urban and suburban. In urban settings, you expect to smell restaurants. You expect strangers to be parked on your street. You expect to have to circle around your block a few times to have to find a parking space. In traditionally suburban locations, the lots are big enough that you would expect never to smell a restaurant. You would expect to always have your own parking. You would expect you know, all of these things that are very suburban. Richfield is both. And what we are coming up against so many times on these issues is the conflict between both. Mm -hmm. And that, that doesn't offer any solutions, but it's just an observation. Council member. 
Which one? <laughs> oh, Sandal. Yeah, um, no. I appreciate your comment, Mr. Stark, because you know you hear that some of your neighbors are sometimes all upset because one of their neighbors is parking in front of their house instead of in front of their own house, or they've got a guest and they're parking in front of your driveway exit as opposed to across the street from their driveway exit. And so I think your, mm -hmm. your dichotomy between urban and suburban is a really good one. I think you've hit the nail on the head. Um, I'm comfortable with adjusting for parking. And do we have something in our ordinance about bicycle racks? I mean, I know Minneapolis does that. Um, people who have bicycle racks get a credit for parking stalls. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't have a, it, there's no credit for parking stalls. There's a requirement though, and, and I, I believe the plan addresses all the bicycle parking that's okay. required. Okay. I, I know I worked, when I was working in, in South Minneapolis, I served on a neighborhood committee, and one of the things they did do when they had some of the same issues for parking was, you know, you put your, your bicycle rack in, and that helped some of your parking requirements. Um, I guess my biggest concern is I do recall CHAMPS. Um, I think my husband was on the council at that point and there was a lot of hoopla about from those neighbors who did not want all of those smells going up into their condos and apartments. Um, I'm open to doing um, what's being suggested here in terms of pre-existing businesses. However, um, we've just had a number of businesses that we've reviewed and looked at and they've installed scrubbers and I don't I assume they're within the 150 150 feet yeah and and I can tell you that with um, El Tejaban the neighbors did come out to the Planning mm -hmm. Commission and voice that as a concern was odors mm -hmm. um, you know I for whatever it's worth I also um, went back and looked at some of the things with champs uh, and the way I understand it is originally the City Council talked about this being an issue for, uh, you know, having having high rises above mm -hmm. a restaurant, and that was yeah. the cause of the issue, uh, and so that's the way the city council had addressed it. What that did was brought out a number of single family residents and said, no, no, this isn't just a, a issue for condominium folks or, or those, and that's why um, mm -hmm. at that time it was, you know, more open to uh, if you're adjacent to any residential, whether it's condominium or single family home. Mm -hmm. Mayor. Council member, I, I would suggest that we look at it and you know work this out with them. And we do have teeth later. I understand they probably do have a liquor license, and we review that every year. And if we get complaints, do they have a liquor license or a beer license? Beer and wine and applying okay. for liquor. And we have to approve that. Uh, have we had it where there's been issues of complaints? Uh, whether it be police complaints or complaints from the citizens, would that would be under review during that process when we're reviewing the license? I don't want to make a threat or anything, but I'm just saying we'll have a, a point to review it later then. I don't know if we can use that against them legally. Yeah, I, don't no, I don't think we can. Think you can. Mayor. Yeah, Madam Mayor and Council Member. You know, I, I think that um, if the policy direction here is to uh, uh, exempt pre-existing restaurants. I think the, b the better way and what I would recommend is we craft some ordinance language giving that part of it some teeth in order to allow mitigation okay. in the event of complaints related to odors. Mm -hmm. I think it becomes problematic if, you, if you're if you trying to tie um, those types, okay. mm -hmm. types of complaints mm -hmm. to a different license for a different activity, um, i.e. Okay. serving liquor on the premises. Mm -hmm. So, again, if the policy direction is we want to we want to grandfather in, so to speak, existing restaurants, then I think the staff would work towards some ordinance changes to give that some uh, mm -hmm. enforcement <laughs> possibilities if there are complaints in the future. And to respond back, if on the agenda tonight, we cannot act on it. If you're going to go ahead and change the ordinance, do we have to delay this, or can we, are we able to move this forward with anticipation of a change? Or well, it's it's the it's the council's prerogative to set policy. Um, if the direction is to to move ahead with it, we oh. we can do that. I guess uh, my, the other thing I wanted to say, and I, I you know, given the past uh, the. Um, businesses who have recently been required mm -hmm. to install order control. I think it would be helpful 
if the council wants a change in policy to articulate tonight uh, the, the, the specific reasons and findings related to the change in policy so that going forward um, in the event there are concerns raised by other businesses that we fully understand the reasons and the factors for um, the council's rationale and wanting a change in policy. L let me ask you a question. Um, sure. When you talk about taking a look in, well, actually changing the ordinance, um, and given the fact that that there's been some some delay uh, because of our schedule and everything, and and the time is not necessarily of the essence, but moving forward and getting the ground broken and getting this thing moving forward is 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 elemental to the success of any business if they're if they're doing a remodel. It, can you can you do something along the lines as we can we can articulate the the uh, conclusions and facts supporting the reason we're moving to to amend or alter it and as long as the the applicant and the builder and here is everybody you, you do something that that if in fact we grant the grant the variances going forward they come up and you create the record that everybody understands that the ordinance is going to be changed and there's going to be some teeth put in it and if in fact mitigation becomes required you're going to be subject to whatever that particular ordinance says going forward even though so i so it's not going to be retroactive you understand what the obligations are going to be under the new ordinance you understand that even though it, it may not be enacted till we go through the right timeline and everything, you are going to be subject to all that. And if, in fact, there's complaints and investigation that requires mitigation, whatever we determine, however that ordinance is finally written, you're going to be subject to it. I mean, can, can we get that agreement as long as all the parties and, and all the moving parts are here tonight? Council Member Garcia. Uh, I am going to move that we table this discussion and uh, we allow uh, our uh, attorney to work with staff to come up with some um, suggestions and that we take this up at our next city council meeting. And I believe that's non-debatable. Can we move the other items though? Not table yes. the whole discussion because yeah, there I think, are other I think we can move, this. yeah. Uh, and I'll add to that that we can vote on the parking. And the but variance I, I, for I believe us. that's undebatable, right? I, I want to hear from Mary. <laughs> right. Well, Madam Mayor, I think, um, first of all, there are several action items yeah. in front of yeah, you. We have to do that. So right. a lot of what Council Member Elliott was addressing, I believe, had to do with the odor control appeal issue. I, I know there was a well, lot of- Well, that, that seems to be the only one that is seriously contested. Okay, so I just I just wanted to make that clear. Yes. There was a lot of information in your in your statement there and I think we don't want to get confused with mm. intermingling issues. We have several action items here in front of the council. So Th that's what I would table then, that the odor control, the odor control issue. Yeah. Okay, and the, the other items, and then the other items would be acted on. Is that what you're suggesting? Okay. You know, and, and I, you know, Council Member Garcia, I'm, I, I, I don't mean to go against you in this regard. Th that's exactly the reason that, that it was brought up on July 8th when we had it before us, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. knowing that it was, and, and this, wasn't, this wasn't a secret that it was to be coming up. Um, Council Member Elliott, I believe that my motion is, on de is not You didn't debatable. make a motion, you made a suggestion. I'll second the motion. I did make a motion. Yeah, she does. Yes. And I and I believe it's uh, it's not debatable. Mm -hmm. Everything's debatable. Mm. Council Member, I'm waiting to see if we're going to have the vote. Yeah, um, we got a motion and a second. Is anybody may, else? May I confirm your what your if I understood what I seconded? Um, it was to table the the. Um, to table only the issue dealing with the odor control. Yes. Is that correct? To allow the staff the time to, um, to address some of the issues and legalities around that. Right. How much time? To, I said to our next council meeting. Mm -hmm. Have oh. you asked them if that's enough time to do what you're asking them to do? No. Well, then does it make sense to ask that? <laughs> no. <laughs> I believe we set policy. I'll call well, the that's question. what I'm asking you to do tonight. Yep. 
I'll, I'll call the question. All those in favor of, of tabling the odor control, answer with aye. 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 Those opposed? No. No. It's three to two. It'll be tabled so that we give staff some time to work on this. Would you like to make a motion for the other items, Council Member? No, go ahead. I'll make a motion to approve the attached resolution granting conditional use permit and variance for the 22.6 foot front building setback, which will allow for a building addition of 6736 Penn Avenue. And I'm going to do these one at a time. Um, all those in favor signify by aye. 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 Motion oh. carries. Uh, did you need a second? I thought, did I have a second? I thought I'll I had second. Second. All those in favor mm -hmm. signify by aye. 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 Opposed? Um, I'll make a motion to approve uh, an appeal for the community development directors to excuse me, to, to uh, allow the variance to allow a reduction in required parking at 6736 Penn Avenue. Second. All those in favor? Um, discussion. A discussion? Yeah. Um, I guess I would like to know whether or not the um, owner has, in fact, made any efforts, successful efforts, um, to see if some of his employees could park at other locations nearby. Staff? Uh, um, the owner's left. We've inquired on that as well, and we haven't received an answer. And the owner's left. Really? Mm -hmm. Why would he do that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why wouldn't he? Mm -hmm. <laughs> because the discussion items aren't over. I think we listed the oh. staff. I think, yeah, that's what I said. All those in favor? Any other discussion? No. All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. The next item on the agenda is uh, a, f a public hearing. Um, no, it's not. Excuse no, it's me. Not. Look at my glasses. It's, a it's number eight considerations. Mm -hmm. uh, Council Member Sue Sandoff. Thank you. Uh, well, we, we need to do seven. We first. Did, we skip oh, seven? seven. Did yeah. we skip seven? Excuse <laughs> yes. me. We're on seven. Okay. okay. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Marina. Seven is a consideration of a resolution restricting parking on Portland Avenue. And right now, um, there's no parking between 67th and 77th Street. Uh, there's no on street parking. And that has, and, but now we're working on the final design, um, which will be. De completed in 2015, and th we are required by Hennepin County and MnDOT to actually do a formal resolution restricting the parking uh, s between 67th and 77th Street, so, so they will be no uh, on-street parking. And uh, so that's just, I mean, we do it now anyway, and so this is just a formal resolution uh, that's required. And so I will move that we adopt the resolution for no parking on both sides of Portland Avenue between 77th Street and 66th Street. Second. Any discussion? No. All those in favor, signify by aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Council member um, Sandal, you are next now. I am. We're Thank back you. in order. All right, this is item number eight. And it's a consideration of a proposed amendment to the final development plan and conditional use permit for Lindale Station planned unit development at the corner of 66th Street and Lindale. And I requested that we get bigger maps because my eyes aren't that yeah. great. And um, it was hard for me to read it on the computer. So, and I have Mr. Stark here, and if you would care to take us through what the changes are that's being proposed, I would appreciate it. Uh, thank you, uh, Mayor and Council Members. Maybe if Melissa wants to grab the seat there, she can help me through this. Uh, what Wellington Management is proposing a uh, uh, an amended plan unit development plan for their uh, Lindale Station uh, development that would add the uh, 8,200 square feet of restaurants and retail space here. Um, 
would include a drive-through uh, that would, um, I believe, in this way. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, normally, what is required with restaurant with any building is that trash be contained within the building, uh, be integral to the building. Uh, for space reasons and for other reasons, the applicant has requested that the trash be in a separate building uh, that also house a bus shelter. Uh, and I'd say that staff is very pleased with the design of the bus shelter. Uh, we had concerns, uh, again, odor, odor. concerns. Uh, in this case, um, the odor concerns were uh, a little different. It was related to having, um, you know, the trash and uh, I can tell you that staff did visit um, uh, maybe half a dozen trash rooms around and uh, we sniffed a lot of trash. <laughs> uh, some trash smells better than others, I can tell you that. Uh, coffee trash uh, smells like coffee, so it's not so bad. Uh, uh, restaurant uh, oil, the oils uh, associated with deep fryers and with uh, frying hamburgers and, and things like that smells horrible. Uh, and so there was concern about uh, allowing the trash to be outside the building. Part of having it inside the building is that there's some impetus then for the um, users themselves to make sure that the trash is kept up with, that it doesn't stink, those kinds of things. Uh, so we had suggested, and I believe that the applicant is open, is, uh, open to uh, doing some odor mitigation on the trash um, room itself. Um, the other thing that they're doing in terms of trying to lessen the impact of the trash is to have um, grease uh, oils for the uh, cooker pumped in and out directly that uh, a truck would pull up to the building. There is a place for them to lock a hose on, pump out the old grease, pump in new grease. It's actually two separate nozzles. Uh, and we believe that that sh will mitigate some of the issues of having the uh, grease dripping as somebody wheels it from you know, the building out to the trash piece. The restaurant itself, um, as we've um, discussed it with the applicant, um, we're suggesting that that would also require odor control. Uh, some of that would be subject to whatever the, the changes that ultimately the um, city council makes on the way odor control is enforced. Um, the statue that's currently here, which is called the family, uh, would be moved from uh, the corner down here to this plaza with the bus stop. Uh, and there would also be some um, bicycle parking here in addition to the bicycle parking that would be part of the restaurant. So I think that that's some of the main points on the site plan. Uh, kind of an aside because it's not part of this approval, but when the city sold Wellington this property uh, a couple of years ago, it was sold for um, a sum, I believe it was 50,000 with the idea that if they were to move forward with um, with constructing a restaurant and other uses on the corner here, that um, that, that would be returned to them. Uh, so if this moves forward, uh, that would be the case. So with that, I would take any questions you might have. Council Member, I know you had some questions regarding some of the frontage of the building. Oh, um, the, uh, where was I looking at? Oh. Side here, there's like two openings. Um, are there, um, on the south portion of your drawing, there's a C, and I'm not sure what a C is. What are all those C's down at the bottom? Well, these are all, uh, this is maybe the um, a site plan. Th that's just talking about, uh, I believe C might be a different uh, pattern of pavement. In this case, okay. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, so that um, you know the the landscape plan, which is on the next page, mm -hmm. there, so the plantings. Uh, you know, I think all those details about. Uh, I think that that's probably m more detailed than you usually would get involved in. Okay, and the discussion in the text talked about an expanded bus shelter. Is that the one you're talking about up adjacent to the trash? Yes. Okay. Is there also one along 66th Street? A bus shelter of some type? <coughs> I don't believe so. Oh, th there is. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. there, is that existing? Yeah. Existing. Yes. Yeah. It'll, existing. It will be slightly relocated, but yes. Okay. Okay, so it'll be incorporated. Will there be outdoor seating? Yes, for both the coffee shop and the restaurant. The coffee okay. shop will be on the east side. The restaurant will be at that southwest corner. Okay. And, you know, for folks watching at home, uh, the 
Uh, the restaurant is my burger. Uh, there's, I believe, a couple of them in the Twin Cities now. One's in the Stadium Village area by the U of M, and one is uh, in the Calhoun Shops, I believe it's called, uh, just north of, uh, north and a little bit west of, or yet yeah, west of uh, Lake Calhoun. Uh, the coffee shop is a Starbucks. Caribou. And Caribou. I'm sorry. Caribou. I, I had gone back and forth, I'm sorry. Uh, is a caribou. And then there's a couple of other, um, and I don't know if the, the applicant wants to do any Come further discussion. There's a couple of other spaces. Um, yeah. One space Come that could be two small ones. Yeah, talk to us more about this. Tell us more about my burger also. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> She's hungry. <laughs> Who does that appeal to? What kind of menu do they really have? Um, <laughs> you know, burgers? my burger is more of a sit down. Uh, it's not. Uh, a late night uh, bar, sports bar. It's more of a uh, burger uh, closing. I, I I forgot the hours, or I, and so I can't give you what they are. But I believe they close at eleven or eleven thirty at night. So it's not a late night operation. Um, it's kind of more of the fast casual. So that um, I believe the ordinance le says that we have to have servers outside if they're doing alcohol. But other than that, people will order and then, you know, pick up their their food and sit down inside the restaurant. So it's more of a fast casual, um, you know, better quality food than your average uh, McDonald's or burger joint of that type. Um, How does it compare to the In-N-Out burger? <laughs> Since I've never been to an in and out beer, oh, I can't okay. say. They're, they're very, very good. <laughs> Are they? All right. So I, I can't mm. say, you know. Would there be wine and beer? Yes, they are applying for wine and beer. They will be applying for wine and beer. Um, okay. And I'm, are they applying for liquor? I don't think so. It's just no, wine and wine beer. No, wine and beer. Right. And their hours, uh, by the way, are 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. Other questions? What other types of um, commercial are you looking at in filling in the rest of the space? Um, we have a great clips, and then on the fourth spot that we have available right now, we haven't made a decision on that, or we, we haven't actually leased it yet, so we're still working on that one. Okay. Madam Mayor, can, can I just, uh, I just want to, it's such a trivial thing, but, I, it, but it bothers me, I have to say this. Um, Yes, w the idea was it, would, it was going to be sold for $50,000 uh, unless they started be before a certain time. Um, they, wouldn't, they would get back $49,999, not the whole fifty. Yeah. We're <laughs> selling. We're, we're not giving the land away. We're selling it for one dollar. with we the proviso that something's being done by a certain point in time. Mm -hmm. Thank you for... We would hate to lose our dollar. Yeah, okay. Well, our, our $1,000. Yep. No, a dollar. A dollar? It's a dollar. A dollar. A dollar. Yeah. A dollar. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I think we have to legally sell it for something, don't we? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Does anyone else have any questions while we have our developer here? I. The only other comment is, I st city staff has been good to work with on this. So um, we went through some, you know, challenging questions and issues, and we worked through it. So I do appreciate city staff. Okay. Okay. Just have a question. Uh, Go ahead. Once, uh, if you get approval, <laughs> when do we expect to see this? Well, we, you know, we're going to be trying to get a, in for a permit within the next two to three weeks. Uh, we're going to probably be submit, submitting next week for permit approval, with the final construction plans. Uh, we really want to try to get the sidewalks all in before it gets too cold. And unfortunately, that only gives us about six weeks to two months from today. So, wow. uh, you know, the building itself will not be ready until at least February 1st for the tenants to start making tenant improvements. Okay. The biggest issues are trying to get the public uh, landscaping done and getting all the utilities in, in time. The building, we can get the footings and foundations in and before cold weather, and I think that will be the easiest part. It's the public uh, issues that are gonna be much harder to get done in time. Okay, I have one other question um, of staff. Thank you very much for, for answering our questions. Um, the existing concrete bus pull-off lane is not adjacent to the bus shelter? Or not close, I mean it's on, there, but. On Lindale Avenue? Yes. Right, oh. the, uh, the developer is working with Metro Transit to make sure that the bus shelter and the bus pull-off will match up. 
that would be good. Yeah. Yeah. No, thank okay. you. So these are just these are not final. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Okay, hearing none, I will move that we approve the attached resolution granting approval of a major amendment to the final development plan and conditional use permit for the Lindale Station planned unit development at 6501 to 6545 Lindale Avenue. Second. Any other questions, discussion? All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Motion, motion carries. Um, Council Member Sandal, you actually have the next item as well. Did we now do that we move oh, well we moved nine. That's right. We did the one in between. Had to move yes, nine. Yes, we did. Yes. So Okay. <laughs> All right. I just have to find it. And that's number ten. ten. Thank you. Advisory board. Right. Right. Okay, item number 10 is a consideration of an appointment to fill a youth term on the City Advisory Commission. And we met earlier this evening, um, and I have to find her name, thank you, um, with Tenzin Dolkar, who is a junior at Richfield High School, who was interested in the Friendship City Commission. Um, she's a very interesting lady and very excited about working in um, with a Friendship City Commission, so I would nominate her to our appointment, which ends on the, what is the date? Um, August 31st, 2015. I'll second. second that. Mm. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Um, item 11, City Manager's Report. Uh, Madam Mayor, members of the council, the only thing I want to say is that, um, you know, today I went down and took a look at the work that's being done on the demolition of the old city garage site. The, uh, the, the office part of the old city garage site, which is south of 77th, yeah. um, is completely down. And man, they did a very nice job. Um, and if you take a look, um, the mortuary site, that's completely down. And when I was there uh, talking to the gentleman operating the, the uh, uh, Bobcat, he thought it would be pretty much, that space would be would pr pretty much filled uh, in by the end of the day before he went home. And they're making big progress on taking out the uh, uh, the old garage. So that site, w when you stand there and take a look at it with those things taken down, and, and, uh, and I would encourage you to go down there in a, yeah. in a couple of days when they get more of it down. Man, that is a, that's a nice big site. Uh, and it just, uh, it just improves that area dramatically. Wow, that's wonderful. Um, claims and payroll. So moved. Second. All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Seeing no further business, I'll call this meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.